It's no secret that in the past few years, the R32, 33, and 34 have skyrocketed in price and popularity among enthusiasts and car collectors. At the same time, I kept hearing the name Garage Yoshida. Apparently, people ship their trio of R chassis vehicles from all over the world back to Japan just to have Mr. Yoshida put his hands on their cars. In fact, the majority of cars at Garage Yoshida now are vehicles that are from international customers, including the very anticipated Built by Legends R34. We featured a few incredible cars from Built by Legends on the Haggerty channel, including the R33 that sold for half a million dollars. In that previous episode, we showed how mines can push the limit to what an R33 streetcar can be, but they only provided the powertrain and a few aero bits. The rest of it was built by Garage Yoshida. I knew I needed to pay a visit to where these skylines were being built, so I drove my Bayside Blue R34 GTR all the way from Tokyo to Osaka to pay a visit to what may be the best Skyline restoration shop in the world. Unfortunately, along the way, being a 25-year-old car, I had many issues. It was the middle of summer and my air conditioning went out. And of course, one of my coilovers completely blew out and lost all its fluid. It got to the point where it was dangerous to drive. Lucky for me, Yoshida-san had an extra set of used HKS coilovers that he took off another car he was restoring. Yeah, it was from a, a customer car that came in to change all the suspension and the bushings. Uh -huh. And the customer just didn't, didn't want the, uh -huh. the old one, so them here. Recycle. My friend Masa from Built by Legends came to help me translate because Mr. Yoshida speaks very little English. When I first laid eyes on this place, I was expecting something like the Nismo Omori factory or Bruce Kanepa's incredible facility. It turned out to be a very traditional Japanese and humble mom and pop shop that happens to build the best concourse level skylines in the world. Only four people work here, including Mr. Yoshida's wife. Because Yoshida-san wants to be hands-on with his builds while keeping the quality as high as possible, he told me in his lifetime, from this very point forward, he can only build 100 more cars. And that's the legacy he's going to leave for the car culture world. This is really eye-opening to me and for whatever reason, this way of thinking is something I've never come across before. You look at individuals like Nakai-san, who has a backlog of over 200 cars to build currently. And I'm assuming if you ask any other builders, whether it be Roof in Germany or FJ Company in Colombia, if you ask them the same question, they probably wouldn't be able to put a number to how many cars they can build in their lifetime. Maybe it's a Japanese, realistic, methodical, and efficient way of thinking, but maybe it's just Mr. Yoshida-san. Yoshida-san is 43 years old. He grew up when the trio of Skylines became legendary status. This all started with a passion and love for these specific cars because as a kid, he dreamed of owning a GTR. Finally, when he was of age and he was able to scrape up enough money to buy R32 GTR, it was a rusty pile of crap. That is when the love for tinkering and fixing started. He has been solely focused on restoring skylines for 14 years now. 
which means he was messing with them before the prices exploded. I don't think Yoshida-san would have ever thought he would be pumping out half million dollar cars one after the other. This is the M Spectner that okay. came in as a full restoration of the body. But now that the customer actually saw this car and he was really happy with how the chassis and the body was already so clean, mm -hmm. he's thinking about doing the engine and drivetrain suspension as well, just like a BBL car. So that's why uh, the process stopped because uh, Yoshida-san is still in discussion with the customer. Tell me about all of these pieces. Did he restore these? Yeah, these are all the parts that's come off or uh, being replaced, and they all been powder coated. Mm -hmm. All the braces, all the brackets, the uh, suspension arm, the subframe, all these parts, it's mm -hmm. sandblasted, of course, mm -hmm. to clean up each part, and then he powder coats. I'm assuming that he tries to save as many of the stock parts as possible, mm -hmm. or is he trying to use as many new parts as possible? It depends on each vehicle. Once he takes the parts off, if the rust or the damage or is extensive, the part can't be reused, he will replace them. But if the parts, after cleaning them up, is usable still, he will reuse the original parts that came with the car. So then what we're looking at here essentially is a, as close to new R34 chassis. Pretty much close to a new car, but this car didn't go through the anti-rust treatment that the R32 chassis went through. So a full restoration might include the anti-rust coating. Once the chassis is repaired, it's submerged in an electrolysis bath to remove any rust, then dipped in an OEM anti-rust coating twice. Then him and his team will take measurements of the chassis to see if it's perfectly straight. If it isn't, he has a custom jig to strain it back to OEM spec with the exact measurements he received from Nissan. His attention to detail ensures the chassis is more precise than it was off the factory line. To his knowledge, Yoshida-san is the only R chassis restorer that uses this OEM anti-rust dip and frame straightening process outside of Nissan. In fact, he started doing this before Nissan started their program a few years back because at the time, Nissan didn't see the value in restoring these cars yet. The challenge with restoring these vehicles now is that it's very hard to come by parts even though they've gained in popularity and value over the years. He has taken it upon himself to create his own stamped body panels and chassis parts that have better stitch welds and better weather sealing than OEM. So this is a, a Garage Yoshida original part that he produced. So these are made in Japan? These are made in Japan, yes. And part of it is because it's basically impossible to get these brand new anymore, huh? You can't. And also this part in particular for the R33 and the 34 is where the rust accumulates because in, in a production car, the seals are not done uh, completely. And as you saw the one that came off the car, it gets rusted underneath. So he always wanted to have a replacement part and he produced it last year. Mm. So this is a, a side seal for the R32. This is a stock part that came out of uh, Nissan. Oh. But it's no longer available from Nissan. So what he's using it for is he's already scanned the product. He's already taken the measurements. And now he's developing the part with a manufacturer. Oh. And this is a high strength steel. The material being used uh, for these parts or the side seal are actually stronger than the original part. So these are all parts that he's developing for the future because these parts are becoming hard to 
come by or they've already stopped production. Mm. I don't know what it is with Japanese manufacturers. Maybe it's an efficiency thing, but most parts manufacturers, including Nissan, only make enough restoration parts to fulfill pre-orders. They don't just make parts willy-nilly hoping to sell them in the future. When Yoshida has the chance to place an order on these parts, he does. And when he has a chance to stock up on things like glass or rubber or anything else, he does that also. Hey, if you like what you're watching, do me a favor. Go check out the Haggerty Drivers Club, 24-7 roadside assistance with flatbed towing, subscription to our award-winning magazine, and more. Sign up today. Link's right down here in the description. You want to talk about something impressive. That's one of the things that's the most impressive to me is all that glass <laughs> just sitting there. <laughs> he, he has the rear quarter windows for the 32, 33, 34, a few dozen each. And also the, the small boxes that you see on the shelf is also the, the molding. So while his skills in terms of the actual restoration and metalwork is very impressive, it seems like he has the foresight to get all the parts that he needs in advance, as many as he can have. That's kind of a big part of it. So he figures that in his lifetime, he should be able to maybe restore 100 more cars, maybe. So he's hoping that uh, he has enough parts. <laughs> if you want to be one of those 100 cars, you better get in line, because it's going to be filled very quickly. <laughs> We sat down for lunch and Yoshida-san casually showed me some swatches for the R34 Bayside Blue GTR. According to him, there's two different shades of Bayside Blue. One used to paint the bumpers and side skirts, one used to paint metal. His theory is that there were two different shades because depending on the material it was painted on, Nissan expected them to fade at different rates. What he's come up with to remedy that is his own paint mix that's the average of two with modern materials. This paint will last another lifetime on a restoration. This is the level of detail he goes into for every single car he touches. The cars that he restores can start off as something that is nearly perfect which begs the question, why even restore it? Or it could be as bad as something like this R32 chassis that he had in his shop. It was in a massive wreck and even the C pillar was crumpled from a front end impact. But it has so much sentimental value to the owner as he thinks this particular R32 actually saved his life, which technically it did. He wants to honor it by restoring it back to its former glory. How is this possible? This looks like crumpled <laughs> up newspaper. <laughs> Look at this. So he's already scanned brand new parts, the parts that he needs. So if he can't find new parts, he will probably make them from scratch. Even like this, like there's a fold here or like, it, is that why this had to be cut out? Because all of this folded in? He actually needed to pull this part straight. So when he was doing it, if this was connected, he would actually pull the, the roof and other parts as well. So mm. he wanted to cut it. This is going to be some project. Uh, how long do you think it's going to take? For <laughs> Two years. <laughs> Two years. Do you have an estimate in terms of cost? Um, no, he doesn't. This is obviously not a business. It's more uh, of his passion and also it's a challenge for him to see if he can fix something like this. Most cars have about 30,000 parts. The question is, how do you get the ones that you can't make yourself? Yoshida-san is a bit of a hoarder when it comes to saving everything even the rustiest parts from every single car that he comes across. Big or small, because he is saving for the future. Think about it, there are a hundred cars waiting to be restored. This is such an early car. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, it is. Look at that, 805? Yeah, yeah. That's so sad. <laughs> so no, but um, although it is a parts car, as long as he has the, the chassis, the caution plates, once he's able to reproduce all the panels that requires to build a car, he can probably rebuild this car. The thing is, this is even a better condition than this chassis, and also way better condition than the chassis downstairs. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't this be a better starting point? <laughs> so this is how the rough steep. Oh, really? Yeah, more. Mm, a lot of rust. Yeah, yeah. Was this a car that was driven up north where there's salt? No, this car was probably just left outside to the elements mm. too long before it came here. Yeah. I was looking around in the yard and I saw so many of these vehicles returning back to the earth. What's incredible to me is that all these will be restored. But at one point, these were destined for the scrapyard and it wasn't worth saving. But now there was so much, it's worth putting in that time and effort to get each and every one of these back on the road. I've already driven two fully restored BBL vehicles, the R32 and R33. And I was really looking forward to driving Mr. Yoshida's personal R32 that he used as a development vehicle for his full factory restorations. This one in particular is fully built as a track car with nothing left untouched. It's making 650 horsepower and I was lucky enough to feel every bit of it. After seeing all this firsthand, before I even left the shop, I decided to ask him to restore my R34 GTR to its former glory. Because to me, the R34 was never about how capable it was or its horsepower figures. Personally, it was just about the aura surrounding the car and what it represented, which was my legitimate childhood dream realized after 25 years of wanting this car. He accepted my offer and I'm so grateful to be one of the 100 left that he is restoring in his lifetime.